favorite one, Jessica Morrison, Realtor with Century 21 Sheets. And I am so excited. We're back for another Indie Home Interviews episode where we, in this series, break down new construction options for you uh, as a consumer across central Indiana. And so this time we're going to sit down with DR Horton. They are a large builder with lots of options. And we have uh, two interviews here recently coming up. Today, we're going to talk about Meridian North. And then our next video, we're going to talk about Brunson's Landing. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, but with us to dive deep into these communities is Mark Williams. Mark, thank you so much for coming on our show and um, yeah, being brave for the YouTube world. <laughs> Yeah, my generation, you know, and didn't grow up around this stuff. So I'm trying to evolve as I go. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, so it's always a pleasure to learn more about communities and what makes different ones special, um, especially I think when you're looking as a family to make a move, um, new construction just doesn't always come up easily. Um, in the MLS or for our local market, BLC, standing for Broker Listing Cooperative, um, yay lawsuits, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a, a, a positive thing for that, you know, we're paying for services and, and having access to that as agents. So anyway, uh, right off the bat into the weeds, uh, all of that to say, this series is an effort to help make things easier for you guys um, in navigating your options with new home construction. So Meridian North, where is that and what makes it special? Meridian North is located right off Meridian Road, um, almost equidistant between Main Street and Greenwood and the roundabout at McKinsey Road. And um, we are in our final phase here, so it's it's just a nice setting off main roads, yet you're very connected and close to everything that the Greenfield community has to offer. And we've got some lovely home sites in our final section, um, decent amenities, playground, and of course, walking trails, and just a nice setting where you're maybe a little a little further away from uh, urban sprawl, but you're not too far for a commute if that makes sense. And to clarify for those not familiar with those specific intersections, we're referring to the Greenfield area? Yes, I'm sorry, we're in Greenfield. And for a kind of a proximity clarification, just about 20 minutes straight out on US 40 slash Washington Street from 465 is Meridian Road. And then we're just a few minutes off that. So it's, I, I live in the Beach Grove area and it's uh, maybe a 25 minute commute for me, something like that. Okay, great. Um, so how, maybe walk me through the progression of this community. How many sections have you had? How many are left? Um, maybe where did you guys start initially with prices and where are you at today? We actually, our first community here was when we were, uh, an independent builder locally, Westport Homes Sawmill. And Meridian North was an opportunity as we sold out of Sawmill and were purchased by and transitioned into the DR Horton family, uh, became the replacement community so we could have a presence out here because the market was very dynamic. And Meridian North had uh, two builders in it ahead of us and there was uh, some land available, and, and we jumped at that opportunity, like I said, to maintain a presence here in Greenfield. That happened. Um, Sawmill sold out three years ago, and so we've been here in Brittany North for about three years, and we are in our, we sold out the first section pretty quickly, and we're in our final phase right now. There's 42 lots left, I believe. Okay. So how many home sites total in this community? You mentioned you have 42 left. Um, I don't know if you remember where pricing was at when it first opened, but where are prices at today? Well, our share was about, I believe, 207 home sites. So we're, you know, two thirds of the way through that, maybe three quarters. My math fails me there. But um, the uh, we started out, I think when we began here, we were in the high twos into the low threes. Now, occasionally we have a ranch that may dip below three, 
but we start out in the very low 300s and go up to like the 340s. Okay, we good. have, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, no, that's a great price point for new construction. Yeah, and we have some nice features included in that. Uh, some of the houses, we, we get into upgrades like laminate flooring and quartz counters. All the baths are typically cultured marble, nine foot ceilings, masonry on the front with most elevations. There are a few exceptions. So they come with a full appliance package. You may get to this, I don't wanna jump the gun, but there's a, a very inclusive package of features and upgrades with these homes too. So you're not getting a stripped down or a base home at those prices. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good time to dive into this because I think a lot of times when people hear those cheaper prices with new construction, and for some of you, you're like 300,000 is cheap, and the answer is yes. <laughs> in today's <laughs> market, yes, uh, with labor, cost of materials, et cetera, land development, depending on where you're at, um, the farther out you go away from what's established, the higher the development costs for the builder. Um, and they're for you as a consumer because somebody's got to pay for it. So um, I, I'm happy to hear that that more entry level price point is being served per se um, with some details still being served. So you mentioned nine foot ceilings, appliance packages included, um, which is great. What else is offered? Uh, in, in a lot of the homes currently available, um, the laminate flooring, you know, the plank style flooring, uh, we do an upgraded paint, which is Sherwin-Williams brand Sure Scrub. It's still a flat finish because we have to do many touch-ups along the way, as, as you're well aware. But it's uh, it's a sturdier finish, and it's easier to maintain. Um, like I said, masonry on most elevations. There may be a couple one-offs that won't have that. Uh, the appliance package is Whirlpool, full kitchen, side-by-side -side fridge with ice and water, gas, self-cleaning range, dishwasher, and above range microwave, all stainless steel finish. Uh, cultured marble, like I said, the nice one piece sinks in the bathrooms. Um, that's lighting everywhere. We, we do a can lights that are uh, usually a series of those in the kitchen and, and nook. And then there's overhead lighting in all the bedrooms, halls, closets, things like that. They're nice, not the old globe lights. They're kind of a more contemporary light. And uh, smart switches, deco smart switch package. So there's some smart home things you get in uh, the Skybell video doorbell, an Echo Dot, um, the smart thermostat, smart home hub, alarm system, uh, garage door opener. So those are, those are, you know, I don't want to go through the whole laundry list, but it, there's a lot of it's a complete home and it's, it's got some real nice uh, finishes with it for sure. Yeah, which is great. I mean, I think the, the smart home integration, um, once you start to have those features, it's really nice. Um, like my thermostat reminds me when it's time to change my air filter. And I think it's just little details like that that are a convenience to, um, you know, take less off of what you have to manually do as reminders or things like that. Um, I like hearing the, um, like the LVP product for flooring is great. Um, that's very durable for a lot of life situations. And, you know, if there's an accident with water, um, it's very easy to repair and take up. Um, where do you see, um, out of the 42 lots that you have, and I can refer to a lot map. Um, are there any lots that are considered a premium lot? And if so, what's the cost with those premiums? Well, what we've done is the costs are absorbed in the home price. We, for a lot of reasons I can get into, uh, several years ago, two years ago, are selling only what we call quick move in, market ready or inventory homes, using industry jargon that you'll hear them call the spec home. Uh, when we were doing the traditional dirt sale model, where you pick out the home site, the floor plan, the options, visit a design center, it was a wonderful experience. But supply chain issues, permitting issues with the local municipalities led us to, when someone made a, a, an investment decision into the new home, it was taking us up to six months to break ground. People were with us for well over a year. 
And it really wasn't a great model for, for the buyer or the seller in that situation, especially when you are under the microscope of a mortgage company for that long. You know, it's, it's pretty invasive. So for those reasons, we decided to sell homes once they were started. The benefit of that is you've got a much shorter turnaround time frame from initial decision making to closing. You know exactly what you're getting in the home up front. You know the final price up front. There's no gray area in the, oh my gosh, how much am I going to add to this, you know, at the design center or, or with options. You know exactly what you're getting. Um, it's allowed us to help serve the market by providing more homes available using the BLC and, and some uh, tools like that to supply the, 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 the housing market with more available and ready homes to support, you know, people that might not want to uh, buy an existing home, but didn't want to wait a year and a half, you know, to have a house built. So because of that, um, you, you see everything you get up front. In the interest of full transparency, the trade-off is you are going to take the house the way it is. And now hopefully we have a, enough houses to choose from so there's some variety in terms of colors and tastes and things like that. Did that answer that okay? No, I think that's great. And I I love nerding out about things like that because I think <laughs> um, that's the whole point, you know, is to help educate and allow people to see things from our point of view as real estate professionals and different um, sections of the industry you know, you're a new home sales consultant and I'm a realtor and we're going to have different experiences within the same industry, but, you know, we all mutually have a goal of helping people find a great place to live and uh, ideally a home that's affordable, well below budget and allows for uh, people to save and build wealth and for that home to be um, an asset after closing and something that they can enjoy living in and not be overburdened with repairs or, or issues. Um, I'm going to throw a curveball question your, your way. And uh, I'm not asking this because I've heard anything being specific to DR Horton as a builder. Um, I think, how do I want to word this? Um, there's been some talk that, you know, with, new homes being pre-built that, um, and I don't know the name of this builder, this was told to me from a home inspector, um, that some builders were trying to expedite the building process so that consumers um, didn't have an opportunity to do like pre-drywall inspections or were putting in their builder contracts that they don't want a third party home inspector to come in. Um, so much so that they were starting to exclude local reputable home inspectors uh, from coming in and helping protect consumers. What are your thoughts about that? And, um, you know, I like the how you just outlined that, but I'd like to dispel any concerns about the expediting process regarding inspections, if if you don't mind. No, I, I think that's a, a very valid concern. And, and frankly, I'm a little disappointed if one of our, uh, you know, fellow builders had that attitude because it's short-sighted and, uh, and I, you're not doing any service to your buyers that way. We, we typically release a, our jargon. We release a home for sale. Usually when it's under roof, we're getting ready to put in the mechanicals, meaning we're going to rough in the the duct work for the HVAC, which is your heating and electric air, air conditioning, um, electrical rough ends and plumbing. Anyway, that's when we typically release them. Now, if, if, if we have a shortage of a particular model or someone falls in love with a specific home site, we are allowed to market anything that the slab's in. So I think organically, most of the houses we sell are nearer completion. There's more show and tell. People that are visual see what they're getting. So I guess what I'm getting to is for the houses that are at a certain level of completion, we welcome an inspection. Now the house is built, so you're not going to get pre-drywall or any of those opportunities. But again, that's not by design. That's just organic. Um, 
the houses that we've sold that are a little earlier in the process, we work very diligently with our on-site superintendents to coordinate any inspection a buyer wants to do. All we ask is, of course, the obvious things, the buyer, the inspector's license, bonded, those kinds of things that are just, you know, sound business practices. But we absolutely do not discourage any, any opportunities for inspection. And as a matter of fact, we are committed to making sure we give the buyers windows of time and the realtor representatives. So if the house is at a certain stage of construction, they don't miss an opportunity to get an inspector out there. And I mean, that is not a gray area. It is, it is absolutely part of our process. We have a paragraph that addresses that in our purchase agreement. And I'm pretty plugged in. I've done this 27, my 27th year right now. And that's, I know builders, certain builders get a little bit queasy about it, you know, inspectors and the unknown there, but we're not one of them. And that surprises me a little bit if it's a builder of any kind of size, but not an issue here at all. And I haven't had anybody complain. I haven't heard of any issues. Uh, throughout our division and our company. No, I think that's wonderful. And I haven't, on my side of things, heard anything negative. I think sure. I appreciate that attitude and that feedback because it is disheartening when you hear that um, there is a company that, or multiple, I'm not aware of multiple, but um, you know that has taken that particular stance on things. And so- uh um, and the thing that worries me more is less about if a realtor is involved in the transaction on new builds, which is kind of a great point to say why you should have a realtor represent you, um, is to help protect you in, in situations like that, or to review that contract with you and say, hey, you definitely need to talk to a real estate attorney because this particular paragraph, you know, removes this opportunity for you. Are you comfortable with that? Um, is that something like you typically cannot negotiate things on, on builder contracts, like it, it, you take it or leave it. So, um, you know, it's definitely buyer beware with things like that. Um, but I appreciate hearing your stance and in, in being favor and welcoming and over communicating when that time period is going to be. Um, I think, you know, for the sake of taking the alternative point of view, I think some builders got frustrated with it being a, you know, pulling up the day of, and they've got crews scheduled and, you know, and I think that's more reflective of their internal communication and outward communication for people to plan. But, um, you know, still, I, I think they're looking at it from a money perspective. And then, you know, if we're trying to be positive here, even just like what you guys are doing with pre-building homes, you know, that jump from five to 8% in interest rates, what well, feels like overnight, um, really cooked a lot of people out of the market. And I feel like, you know, even though the process of building and customizing is a wonderful experience, I think everybody should get to do that. Um, being able to like that six months timeline that you outlined of extending, like your interest rate, you know, could you know, definitely go up during that period, unless you want to pay a lot of money to lock it. And then, you know, what happens when, you know, that time period passes and you've got to pay more to extend it. So um, I think on a positive side, whether it's DR Horton or another builder um, who's offering these pre-built homes or trying to keep things on a schedule, um, I think they're trying to maybe serve that part of the market where we just need a place to live and not get priced out because interest rates keep going up. Like, what do you think about that? Well, I think you brought up two good points on, on what we're doing. One, I do want to say we work very hard on, on just closing on the inspection side to provide access at the appropriate times. But if something happens on the inspector's end or the buyer's end, we will not suspend our construction process to wait for them to get in. So we make sure they have a realistic and fair and advance notice for a window of opportunity. And when that window closes, it closes. So I, you know, I, I wanted to clarify that, which I think is more than fair. Um, yeah, you know, when the rates skyrocketed vertically there, 
we actually invested a lot of money working with a lot of our homeowners that were in a little bit of uh, distress in terms of qualifications, uh, paying for rate extensions, you know, trying to help where we could to make this this home still happen for them and, and fulfill their dreams. So like everyone else, we had casualties. Uh, it, it was a little ugly there for a while, but if it was avoidable and realistically able to do so, we were very cooperative. And, and prior to that, I just want to mention, you know, you talk about how we compare to other builders. When the market went crazy during the pandemic, there are a lot of opportunists out there, you know, imposing price increases on people under contract, you know, claiming, you know, when lumber doubled, we ate all of that and honored every contract we had. Um, we had a lot of people, the only good thing about the delays, and I'm digressing here, but when, when we were having a hard time getting houses into the ground, when, when my buyers were getting antsy, I would say, look, we haven't broken ground yet. And you, you have probably $36,000 of equity of real money in your new home. And usually that made them uh, a little more patient and understanding. But uh, rate wise, that I think if, if this is a time to get into this, that is the, in my opinion, this most significant benefit we offer right now. You know, the benefits of a new home are always a period of years before you have to think about updates, you know, repairs, things like that, because everything's brand new. Things that do have issues are under warranty for periods of time. So there's a lot of nice benefits there. No one's ever lived in it. Everything is yours from the beginning. But really, from a practical standpoint, the finances and the the mortgage savings we can offer right now, I think, mitigate almost everything else. You know, when the rates were at the pandemic lows, our mortgage company offered better communication and good service. OK, that was about it now. And I can get into that whenever you want to. Some of the programs we're offering, um, we're saving. We're, we're giving people up to fifty thousand dollars more buying power versus an eight percent par rate or an existing home. Um, and that translates into savings up to, you know, three hundred bucks a month um, versus getting a loan off the street. And I can get into more of that. I don't know how far in the weeds you want to go, but it is significant in my job. I feel I'm not doing my job. When people come in, if I don't talk about the savings and the value they can get with the programs we're offering right now through our sister mortgage company, DHI Mortgage. Sure. I think that's a great segue. And I think you probably perked a lot of people's ears when you say, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, let's save 50,000. Um, there's also the saying, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. So let's walk through, you know, those terms and conditions, you know, how, what do you need to apply? You know, what are maybe some of the risks with that? Um, sounds sure. I know different. we're, what, what, what we're doing, which I am on board with a hundred percent is I know we were going to discuss incentives and I guess we'll kill two birds with one stone here because instead of, including a feature or, you know, option packages. We've invested all of our, our money with the goal of, of getting the best rate programs we can offer right now. And let me, let me, this is kind of how I simplify it. When you're comparing things, every thousand dollars, I'm speaking generalities, of course, I can get deeper in the weeds on specific homes, but generally speaking, every thousand dollars you reduce your home price, um, on a 30-year mortgage, today's rates, you're saving about $6 a month, we'll say. Every quarter of a percent, you lower your interest rate. In that same scenario, you're saving $50 a month. So if I'm not a cash buyer, the house discount or price is less relevant than the rate I'm getting. Um, you know, rates are 8.125% last time I looked, just generally speaking, conventional 30-year mortgage. Obviously, if you get into specialty loans, 15 years or lower, but we'll use that for base. So we have three choices right now we're offering. Um, and I'll get into qualification in a second. That's the other thing that makes these legitimate opportunities. I'll, I'll clarify that in a second. You can go with a uh, just a simple, our we call it our builder forward commitment. It's a rate buy down, fixed rate program. It's 5.99% for an FHA or our, our, our government VA loans. 6.25% for a conventional loan. 
Now that is subject to qualification, but it is normal qualifying based on a just a regular conventional parameter or an FHA parameter. You'll see some of these spectacular offers out there where the rate's ridiculous. And if you read the fine print, you'll see that you have to have an 825 credit score. You have to put down 25%. You know, your buyer profile shrinks down to nothing to show there's just a gimmick. Our offerings are available to pretty much anybody that qualifies in the loan parameter, FHA buyer, VA buyer, conventional buyer. So there's not a lot of springs attached to it, but it is subject to qualification. In addition to the rate buy down and say we're going at just, I'll just lower down to eight versus six and a quarter percent. That's 1.75%. If you take $50 per quarter of a percent, where are you at 325 bucks or, and if you take that to the six per thousand, that gives you about $53,000 more buying power versus an existing market. If you're paying what we call the par rate or the 8.125% rate. So it's a very powerful discount. In addition to that, we pay $4,000 towards the uh, buyers, the family's closing costs. And in most loan situations, that's pretty inclusive. So we're taking care of the lion's share of the closing costs. Now, for those that may be more rate sensitive or need to get a little bit of a lower rate to qualify for a home, period, we take that 4000 and we can invest that towards the rate. And then we have two more choices. One is called a 2-1 buy-down. It's a fixed rate program, but your first, first year rate is in the situation, say 4.25%. So you're getting an artificially low payment for a year. And it goes up 1% in year two at 5.25%. And then the third year, it's fixed for the rest of the life of the loan, years three through 30 or whenever you would sell or refinance, it's good at 6.25%. That is, I think, good if someone is maybe starting a new job where they see a, a, a short-term increase in pay coming their way, helps them transition to that. Um, I think the best way to allocate those resources is we can do the same thing where we reinvest that 4% and we can buy the fixed rate program down another quarter. So you're doing no worse than probably four and three quarter percent FHA, or no, excuse me, we're 5.99, five, yeah, five and three quarter or 6% conventional. I know I got a little wonky there, but the, the, the bottom line is, like I said, the, the, the numbers I throw is you have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars more buying power using our rate programs. And that translates into, let's just say, two, three hundred dollars less a month you would pay comparatively. And we have loan officers that are just really service oriented and they can, if someone, like you said, really wants to crunch numbers. They can get as deep into the weeds as someone wants. It's highly analytical. They also can present it. So it makes sense to anybody else that, that isn't quite that numbers oriented, if, if that makes sense. Sure. And I think you explained that very well. Um, you know, for those of you who are still having trouble following, like I am more of a visual <laughs> person being an artist. Um, you know, when I see numbers in my head, I or, you know, when people start talking numbers, I try to picture them in my head and to follow sometimes is complicated. And so I think how you've explained it is great. Um, but I think it's also a true testament that there are a lot of programs out there. And so as a buyer, just know, like the sooner you have these conversations with people and are, are willing to pull back the layers on the onion or the curtain of, of what's going on in your finances, that conversation is confidential between you and the loan officer um, to see, you know, are you able to buy? How many programs are you eligible for? Are you eligible for any down payment assistance programs or grant money? Um, you know, some areas may qualify for USDA financing and therefore be 0% down, you know, all of those programs are discussed with you and the loan officer. And then you can also discuss, you know, okay, if you can't buy today, what's the plan to get you on the path to home ownership? Or what are the obstacles that you need to change? Or conversely, let's say you can buy, but if you made adjustments and when you paid certain bills each month, you might be able to improve your credit score and therefore qualify for a better interest rate. So 
having these discussions early just gives you options and really helps take the stress off your, your plate because the last thing you want to do is wait till your lease is up or wait till uh, an important deadline and try to rush. And, you know, this is a significant investment and we want to give time for you to feel like you've done your research, you understand what you're doing, the home that you're buying, the area that you're buying, you understand what you're signing. And, you know, just because we can click and swipe right or whatever, you know, and, and look at things with instant gratification these days, um, I, I just think it's really important not to overlook that due diligence period and research um, so that, you know, down the road, or especially like when you're considering these two on buy down programs that you're fully informed of what you're signing up for. Um, so that when your three hits, you're, you're not surprised in that payment or you've planned accordingly. And I would, I'm curious, Mark, in the long term, with any buyers who are taking advantage of those programs, how many new listings we're going to see in three years where, okay, the rate's going to go up or has gone up, you know, I, I want out and, you know, where are interest rates going to be then? And is it going to be more attractive to move because rates have gone down or, you know, all right, you know, are we still going to be hovering in these higher rates for a while? And um, I don't know. I'm just curious uh, on that front, you know, saying it's uh, a sustainability uh, issue, just curious. No, I, I that, that's a good, good point. And I um, didn't mean to jump in there too early. Um, what was I going to say? The uh, one thing I tell people, I've made a, a strong commitment towards, you know, finance knowledge and mortgage because that's how the house becomes attainable for people in most cases. But I always preface it by saying, I am not a loan officer. I have never been a loan officer. I don't wanna be, but I think I can get you started and then we'll get you with a loan officer when the time's appropriate. Um, I think it's important to clarify that just for you know, a lot of reasons. But um, the two one buy down, I have personally not had one buyer uh, take advantage of that. My buyers, if they, if they want the lowest rate they can, we usually opt for the fixed rate at six, where we can go another quarter percent down from our, you know, our starting point buy down rate. Um, the two one buy down has its merits, but I'm not. I think there are better ways to allocate your resources. I really do. You know, getting the artificially low rate for two years, unless there's a real specific. I mean, a narrow specific application that, where that makes sense. Why would you want a quarter percent higher fixed rate, you know, long term, you know, um, a million years ago? And I mean, I'm talking probably 20, the two one buy down, people could qualify for a home based on the first year rate. So it helped people get into home ownership. And that was a good thing. But the flip side of that coin was is just what you alluded to a few minutes ago. When the full payment became due, these people weren't prepared. They were set up for failure, not success. And that's when we got hit with that and non-conforming loans. And I won't get into all that. But that's when we got hit around 06 with an absolute uh, pandemic of uh, or epidemic, I should say, of foreclosures. And that's when they made a lot of different changes to regulations and loan offerings. And the buyer is way more protected now, in my opinion. But uh, so I don't think even people that opt for the 2-1 buy down now would, would have some of the same potential consequences that they had back then. And I think anybody that's offering that is doing a way, I know we're doing a way better job letting them know exactly what they're getting into, how the scenarios play out, what the payments look like, what the increases look like. So that they're, if they want to take that on for, like I said, a specific reason, they are well-versed and, and eyes wide open. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think we've definitely learned a lot as a society from, um, you know, 2008 and for the better. Uh, so we've got a few minutes left here. Um, taking it back to the Meridian North community specifically, um, I feel like we've given the buyers and sellers a lot of tips for or around incentives, but I do want to make sure that we just really highlight what makes Meridian North special, maybe compared to some other options that might be available as a new fill, new build option in Greenfield. Um, is there anything else with community amenities or anything that you feel is just really important for people to know about it? 
you know, I, I just think it's kind of a, a nice fit in the market in terms of we're still geared more towards the front end buyer, but we're putting some amenities in these homes that are maybe a cut above. Um, and we're also nearing completion. We have most of the lots we've broken ground on, the home sites in our final section. So if you go into a brand new neighborhood, you know, you may get worn out with all the, the, the construction activity and traffic and noise. And, and a lot of that's gone by the time people get home to work daytime hours. But it is a lot quieter and serene here. And the established part of the neighborhood looks terrific. I mean, there's a lot of pride and ownership here, beautifully uh, landscaped yards and and the flurry of people around here walking their pets and, and, and their children, hanging out with their children. I walk here in the evenings when the weather is good um, instead of being on a treadmill or something. And mm -hmm. it connects me to the neighborhood, but I always get a good, good feeling walking through here. It's very neighborly and warm and um, a lot of people are out, you know, anything can happen anywhere I have to say, but I think it would be a great place where you could let your kids get on a bike and have a, a little bit of old fashioned freedom riding to the playground or, you know, there's no drive through traffic in the back either. So, uh, those are I, some of the things I guess I would emphasize. And, and like I said, again, we're geared towards more front end buyer. But we the houses are equipped nice enough. Someone on the other side of the home buying process when to downsize would like some of the appointments we have. Um, so it's kind of in our rates help on the first time in. So I would say you get maybe a little nicer house than you might get with another builder that was doing pure starter homes with lesser included features. Okay, great. Um, so we've talked a lot in this interview for Meridian North on some things that make DR Horton special, incentives. Um, we're gonna cut over to the Brenson Landing interview here in a minute. So for those of you, that one will be a little bit shorter since we spent a lot more time on this one uh, going into some of these details. Um, so it's kind of a, a two for one, so to speak, but- Aren't you the lucky one? I... <laughs> you can back to back episodes with me. Yeah, it's going to be great, super efficient, and uh, I'll get it scheduled out, and woohoo. Um, but <laughs> for those of you who are interested in learning more about the Meridian North community in Greenfield, Indiana with DR Horton, um, you can connect with Mark either in the description of this video through the link, or Mark, is there an alternative method? Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, I my I direct emails fine. Um, it's M L Williams, just my first two initials, M L Williams at drhorton.com. Um, that, that would probably be, that would be acceptable. I don't know what, you know, all the information, but yeah, I think that'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, final question for the community. Um, are you guys allowing people to come in as investors and purchase a home, either pre-built or whatever? We have, uh, we, as far as I know, since we've been here, I want to say there maybe have been four, so it's not wholesale. And I think the investors turned off a little bit because we're not giving the houses away. The last time one tried, and it wasn't through me, it was through an associate of mine. And uh, we didn't, it didn't go through because we weren't, we're, we're committed to not, uh, we want our we want our homeowners to prosper and build equity, and I think when you when you do too many of those investor sales, one you don't have the pride of ownership I just referenced, and two your house prices are trending the opposite direction, which hinders appreciation. So has it happened? Yes, but wholesale, absolutely not. Okay, great, um, and then. If you choose to reach out to Mark um, and you don't have a realtor, I'd love to represent you and help guide you through that process. Um, my compensation as a realtor is built into the base price of homes that you see online for new construction. Um, that's not something that the builder will ever negotiate below. So um, think of it as if you don't use a realtor, uh, that you're paying for services you're not using. Um, 
representation is really important because there's a lot to consider um, from, well, in this case with pre-built homes, you don't get to pick the lot necessarily on where the home will be built, um, but help weigh options with different lots, consider different floor plans, go to bat for you with negotiations, keep things on schedule, keep you informed. Um, but for the most part, uh, these days things have gotten really great, I would say with communication. Um, you know, coming out of the COVID, like by comparison, the, the COVID pandemic where people were <laughs> not sure what was going on. So um, Mark, thank you for your time. I know we're going to do another interview here in a second with Brunson Landing, but um, any other final thoughts for Meridian North? Um, no, I think, I think I've talked quite a bit, so give them a break for now, but I'll be happy to answer any questions and I would welcome any clients that you would send to Jessica through this presentation or any opportunities that may present themselves. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Everyone for tuning in. If you have any comments or questions or other communities that you wanna see as a viewer, please feel free to comment below. Tell us what you thought was valuable. Um, if there's other questions you think would be valuable to add to this list, um, I do it very much off the hip. I, I used to have a script of questions and as I've done these, I've gotten more comfortable um, with asking questions as it comes up in the conversation. But if there's questions you'd like to see asked more or um, just certain details, we can certainly add those to the list. We want this series to be valuable to you as a viewer. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and share. Thank you.